Let's have a look at some more properties of multiplication and division. We know that something like this is just six lots of three. So six multiplied by three. But we can see that as being made up of four lots of three plus another two lots of three. Working purely symbolically, we can see this as 6 multiplied by 3. Well, 6 is 4 plus 2. So we've got 4 plus 2 multiplied by 3. And that means that the 3 needs to multiply with the 4 and also with the 2. So we've got 4 times 3 plus 2 times 3. And that is going to give us 4 times 3 is 12, 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 times 3 is going to be 18. What we have here, the fact that the 3 needs to multiply with the 4 and also the 3 needs to multiply with the 2 is known as the distributive law. Another law we can look at is as follows. Let's look at if we have 2 multiplied with 4 times 3. Well, that means we've got two lots of 4 times 3. What does 4 times 3 look like? Well, 4 times 3 is 4 lots of 3. And we've now got two of these, 4 lots of 3. So we've got two lots of 4 lots of 3. And so we can see quite easily from that picture that what we've got is 8 lots of 3. But 8, we know that 8 is just 2 times 4. And so what we've got is 8 is 2 times 4 times 3. What we're seeing here is it doesn't matter the order in which we do this multiplication. We can do 2 multiplied by 4 times 3, or we can do first do the 2 multiplied by 4 and then multiply it by 3. This is called the associative law. How do these laws help us? Well, let's consider something like 12 times 7. Imagine we didn't know our, seven, our 12 times table. So what we can do is remember that 12 is made up of 10 plus 2. So then we can say that 12 times 7 can be got by saying 10 times 7 plus another two lots of 7. And so it's going to give us 70 plus 14, which is 84. Imagine we couldn't do 8 multiplied by 6. Well, we know that 8 is 2 times 4. So what we've got here is 2 times 4 multiplied by 6. Now, we might know what 4 times 6 is. And because of the associative law, we can say 2 lots of 4 times 6. And we know 4 times 6 is 24. So this is 2 lots of 24. And doubling 24 is really easy. The answer is 48. So that's using the associative law. A few more examples. If we were trying to do something like 16 times 23 minus 6 times 23, well, we actually can just reverse the distributive law here and see that what we've got is we've got 16 lots of 23 and we're taking off 6 lots of 23. So what we're going to be left with is 10 lots of 23 and that is going to be 230. Now let's say we're given a fact like 18 times 26 is equal to 468. Can we use that to work out the next lot? Well, the first question is what is 468 divided by 26? And that should be very easy to answer. We know about the relationship between multiplication and division. So immediately we'll get our answer of 18 here. But now what if we were then to divide by 468, not by 26, but by 52? Now hopefully you're immediately noting 52 is just double 26. Now this is where I actually find it quite useful to write things as a fraction, because it, 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 division as fraction, because it helps me to see what's going on. I'm trying to do 468 divided by 52, right? And I notice immediately that my 52 is just 26 multiplied by 2. I know that if I do 468 divided by 26, I'm going to get 18. But you can you see I still have to divide by 2. So 18 divided by 2 gives me my answer of 9. 
All right, what about 18 times 13? Well, here I'm noticing that I had 18 times 26, and now I'm going to 18 times 13. 26 is double 13, or 13 is half of 26, right? So 18 times 13 is just going to be half of 468, which is going to be 234. And then the very last one, 19 times 13. Well, I know that if I had 18 lots of 13, so 18 bags with 13 sweets in them, I'd have 234 sweets. So what if I had 19 bags now? Well, I've just got one more bag of 13. So I just need to add 13 onto 234, and I will get my answer of 240. Seven.